I sat alone the other night, the hour well past three, and thought about the argument that split my son from me. I don't need your help, he said, while browsing through my fridge, and stay out of my bedroom, too. You've got no privilege. His words were sharp as broken glass that bite you to the bone. He ran outside and took my car and left me there alone. That was several days ago. I haven't seen him since. But then today a cop came by. His name was Sergeant Vince. Is this the home of Mr. Ray? He asked in quiet tones. Yes, it is, I said. That's me. What brings you out today? There's been a wreck, he slowly said, and it involved your car. He handed me two pictures then. Do you know who these are? I'm not so sure about the girl, but that boy is my son. I couldn't bear to think about how all this had begun. Why don't we sit a spell inside, he said, and we went in. We sat down in the parlor, but I couldn't look at him. My eyes were drawn along the walls where my son's pictures hung, and now they're all that's left to me, his face, his smile, his fun. The sergeant waited patiently for me to turn around, and when I did, I noticed that his cap and shades were down. I'm sorry, Sarge, I said at last. I know you can't stay long, but I was hoping I'd wake up and see this dream was wrong. The sergeant said, I understand. This sort of news is bad, but maybe I can help you some in grieving for the lad. See, I've become acquainted with your son almost a year. He brought my daughter home one night and joined me in a beer. He really seemed to like her, so he came around the lot to shoot some pool or watch TV or swim when it was hot. I didn't know, I had to say. We haven't spoken much. Ever since his mama died, we've both been out of touch. His brother joined the army, and they're training for Iraq. His sister left five years ago. She's never coming back. So you're all by yourself, he said. All I could do was nod. Except today, you're not alone. It's you and me and God. I looked at him in disbelief. What kind of man could hint that he knew how I felt, alone, abandoned, old, and spent? He saw the doubt upon my face and said, I have to say, I read a note my daughter left for me to find today. It said, Dear Dad, forgive me, please, for leaving home this way, but I can't take your drunks and rage since Mama ran away. I'm leaving with my fiancé. We are flying out at four. We're getting married Saturday. We can't grieve any more. I sat there, stunned and silent, as he put the note away. We have a lot in common now from what occurred today. I guess they would have told me soon, I said from outer space. I always thought my son would speak such matters face to face. I don't know how I'll manage now that everybody's gone. No reason to do laundry, cook or clean or mow the lawn. I had a thought, the sergeant said. Why don't we carry on? Let's get together once a week to help us get along. How does Sunday work for you, the diner down on Birch? We can meet for breakfast there before it's time for church. Sure, I said as he got up and wiped a tearful eye. We've got so much to talk about, what makes a father cry.